So we are going to be talking about second level interviewing today. We're going to look at the importance of the second level interview. We're going to talk about preparing for the interview. We're going to talk about what to expect. We're going to talk about the day of the interview. We're going to talk about following up. And then we're going to speak a little bit on some things that you might want to consider when you're evaluating your offers. The first thing we want to talk about is the corporate view of the second level interview. This is going to allow the corporation to take a more in-depth look at any candidate and all candidates that they feel might be a fit for their company. So in a great portion of this interview, they're looking at your personality. They're going to go into a little more depth about your skills. They're going to look at when you're interviewing with the possible department that you'd be in, your ability to work within that team, how you might be a fit with that team, etc. And they're going to look at how you match up with their organizational culture. As far as the job candidate view, this is going to allow you a first-hand look at the company. So it's really important that you have a real clear idea of what you kind of expect from this interview. You're going to have the ability to look at their work environment. You're going to get a clear view of their corporate culture. And you're also going to be able to probably interact with your fellow coworkers. You want to plan on traveling the afternoon or the evening before your visit. Even if you're driving to the interview, you want to do that the day before. Most of the time, if you have to fly, the company will probably fly you out the afternoon for the visit. And finally, you want to expect a full day of interviewing. You can take whatever type of interview you've already had with them and multiply it, you know, three or four times. They're going to put you through several different levels of interviewing at this time. So you can expect to be contacted from the organization anywhere from two to four weeks after the first interview. More than likely, you will receive a telephone invitation to do a second interview with them, possibly by the hiring manager, more than likely by the recruiter that you talk to. And then you will receive confirmation by mail. So this is kind of the timeline you're looking at, generally speaking. This doesn't always follow this rule. It might be shorter, could be longer, but this is on average is the timeline you'd be looking at. So how does this all work? Well, basically, you know, what, do the, what does the company pay for? Well, they're going to typically pay for your travel arrangements, which are going to include if they have to fly you, they're generally going to coordinate with you on setting up the best time for you to fly, but they will take care of the plane tickets. They will take care of mileage if you drive to the interview, such as, say, for instance, if it was Dallas, that would be an interview that you could drive to, and they would pay you mileage to, to drive your car down there. They're typically going to pay for an airport shuttle or a car to pick you up at the airport and take you to the hotel. But it says that they would pay for a rental car. Typically, most companies are not going to do a rental car. If they were a long ways away from a particular airport, maybe they would, but more than likely, they would not want to have a liability involved with having you have to deal with a rental car. And finally, they're going to take care of probably the hotel arrangements. Most companies, they're going to have a hotel close by, and they'll have a direct bill arrangement set up with that hotel, and they will take care of those arrangements for you so that you don't have to worry about that. What you do need to worry about is preparing. So the first thing you're going to do is review. Basically, you're going to look at the notes you took after the first interview, look at the questions where you think you did well, Look at the questions where you have opportunity to do better. Also, at this time, you want to review any reports that you might have on the company. You want to look again at their website. And then you want to get out on the information superhighway, so to speak, and start looking at the industry and the business publications on the Internet, anything that you can glean from the library. But you definitely want to start reviewing to get prepared for this interview. Next, you want to talk to any alumni that you can find out that are possibly could be employed by the company currently. You want to look for some employees that might be doing the job you're interviewing for. And you want to talk to people who directly deal with the company or the company's product. Not necessarily people that work there, but people who are maybe possibly clients of that company or who have experience using the company or their products that they produce. These are a couple of steps that you want to take and get prepared. 
So in getting prepared, you should be familiar with the company's operations. So you should have a general view of the hierarchy from the top officials on down. Uh, you should have a really strong grasp of the company's mission and their long-range goals. You should have a, a good understanding of the corporate philosophy and possibly their management style. And then you should also be familiar with the company's community, not only within the company, but how they interact with the individual communities that they're a part of. Are they good corporate partners with the communities? Are they into giving back, et cetera? So some good topics to cover with them while you're there would be their corporate goals and direction or what they consider career enhancement. So your opportunities to possibly attenuate your education, their, also their training, their advanced training, et cetera. You also want to look at their market growth opportunities. You want to look at the company's competitive environment. So who are their competitors? How do they stack up against them? Are they losing ground? Are they gaining ground? Are they pulling away? You want to look at their R&D. So what kind of services do they have coming down the, the pipe that they're developing? What kind of products are they developing? Next, you want to look at their evaluation system. So how are you going to be evaluated? That relates to, you know, when will your first evaluation be? Will there be a merit increase tied to that? How often will you be eligible for merit increases? Do you get evaluated every year, every six months? Typically within your first year, you're going to have more evaluations than you will the years after that. With some companies, you might have four evaluations the first year, and then you might not get evaluated except every 12 months after that. You want to take a look at career paths of recent hires. You will definitely want to look at their commitment to training. That goes back to career enhancement. Are they going to be able to put you in situations where you're going to be able to advance in your career? Or are you going to have to go back to school to advance with the company? And then again, you want to look at the community lifestyle where they're located. Is that going to be in line with your work-life balance? Are you going to be able to pursue the hobbies and the interests that you have outside of work? So the next thing you want to think about in getting prepared is you may want to make sure to take the appropriate business attire. More than likely, when they make their initial offer to come for a second interview, they're going to let you know, typically they're going to let you know what's going to be required. For instance, if you're going to go out the night before, will it be business attire or will it be business casual, etc.? More than likely, you can assume that it's going to be business attire the day of the interview. So that means uh, just like interview attire, dark suit, light shirt, coordinating tie, neat and professional. The next thing you want to do in about getting prepared is you want to leave anything personal at home. This is not the time for you to take your homework with you to work on the night before. You want to leave all of those things here. So that means midterms, projects, girlfriend, boyfriend. All of those issues need to stay wherever you're at. Do not take them with you. You want to be totally focused on this interview because this is the one that's probably going to make or break you. And then finally, you just want to make sure you have a well-groomed appearance. So if you need to get a haircut, you need to get your nails done, you need to get your shirt cleaned, take care of all that a week or so at least before you're going to leave for your trip. So next is going to be the arrival at the site where the second level interview is going to take place. First thing you want to do is you want to carry enough cash with you to cover taxis, baggage tips, and other out-of-pocket expenses. You want to buy a drink in the airport. You need to carry cash or have a debit card available in order to take care of that. You have to take a taxi from the airport to the hotel. You know, I don't know how those arrangements would be made, but typically you'd have to pay for a taxi, so you need to make sure you have some way arranged to take care of that. You want to make sure and keep all receipts. You will be reimbursed for most of your out-of-pocket expenses, so you want to make sure you have receipts for those. When checking into the hotel, you want to make sure and ask for any messages that the company may have left with you. There may be last-minute changes to the itinerary. They may want you to look over some documents. They may even leave a project for you to work on before you come into that evening's festivities or coming into the next day. And finally, most hotels, not most, all hotels will ask to swipe your credit card for any incidentals. Now, if you don't have one, 
it's not going to be that big a deal, but you won't be able to, you know, take advantage of any incidentals that you might want to, such as in-room movies, okay? Not that you would want to anyway. You need to be focused on your interview, not necessarily focused on what's on the pay-per-view, okay? Uh, but they will take a swipe of your credit card. Again, that's for incidental. So any in-room movies, uh, they have snacks. You know, if there's a mini fridge, all that stuff in there costs. Even the bottle of water that they leave up on the counter, that you do pay for that. The company will not pay for that. Next thing you're going to want to do is schedule a morning wake-up call. Most hotels these days will have a clock radio in your room that you can set. They still also have a system that you could call and set up a wake-up time as well. Take advantage of it. In addition to your cell phone, do not let this be something that kills you for this interview by not scheduling a wake-up call and you oversleep. Next thing you're going to do when you first get there is unpack, iron anything if you need it. Most hotels, if they don't have it in the room, they're going to have an iron and ironing board available for you and you'll be able to take advantage of it, get your clothes in pristine condition. Remember, local calls are not free. The only free phone call that you can make from your room is to another room. If you need to make a local phone call, there will be a charge for it. And most of the time, it's three times whatever it is at the uh, local pay phone. So you do not want to charge any phone calls to your room. Use your cell phone. Definitely do not charge long distance to the room. It will cost a fortune and the company will not pay for it. So the evening before the interview, typically they will schedule some type of mixer or social event with possibly all of the candidates that are coming in with other members of the company. So the way you want to think about this is the moment you get off the airplane, the moment you check into the hotel, your interview has actually begun. Because you are being evaluated on your social graces, your manner of speech, your ideas and views, and your ability to carry a conversation, not typically on business, but in a social situation. And again, ability to mix business and pleasure, and they're looking at your maturity as well. So if you have dinner with the company representatives, dress is typically business casual but they will let you know if it if it's anything more than that or anything less than that if it's like totally casual but you want to dress conservatively no matter what the situation you want to eat and drink moderately don't go in for a really big heavy meal and then possibly you might end up not feeling well and then you're not going to make a good impression you want to make sure to avoid language or subjects that might offend the two big subjects politics and religion you want to stay away from those. Also highly recommend you stay away from alcohol. Even if you're of legal age to drink, even if they offer it to you. So you can say yes if you're of legal age to drink. But typically when you start drinking, your, your judgment gets clouded and loose lips sink ships. So just stay away from it altogether. When you get back to the hotel, make sure your clothes are clean and ready for the next day. You want to make sure and get plenty of sleep. You are facing six to seven hours of important meetings the next day. So staying up till one, two o'clock working on homework or working on a project or watching pay-per-view movies is not the way to get prepared for this. When you get back to the room, make sure you're, everything's ready for the next day. Your wake-up call, your clothes, and then go to bed and get some sleep. It'll be hard enough for you to go to sleep sleeping in a room or in a, in a place where you're not familiar. I don't know about you, but hotel rooms are one of the hardest places for me to go to sleep. So the interview day, dress, it's going to be business attire. You want to be punctual. Punctual does not mean if you're supposed to meet them in the lobby at 7.30 that you're walking in there at 7.30. You want to be waiting on them. So 7.15, 7.20, you want to be in the lobby ready to go. You can expect three to five one hour long interviews. Now these interviews will be with a wide variety of individuals people from anywhere from accounting to operations to human resources to the supervisor that you could be working for. You just never know. Again, you could be interviewing with various management levels from the top person at that particular location down to an HR specialist. You can expect to get more probing questions about your behavior. This 
particular second level interview, they already have a pretty strong idea of your technical skills. If they don't, they'll stick you in the room with a test or a project and, and really find out about your technical skills. These probing questions are going to be behavior related. They're looking at how you're going to fit in with the company. Be prepared to be asked the same question numerous times. So you can be sure that you're going to be asked, what is your greatest weakness? More than once. What is your greatest strength? More than once. Tell me about yourself more than once. So be prepared for this and have those answers ready and be able to give them out, you know, one right after the other. You can expect possibly at this level of interview to be asked about your salary requirements. And so you need to have some of that in your mind. But you want to remember, it does not get brought up until they bring it up. You want to be prepared for any possible testing that they might do as well. And finally, they will probably take you on a tour of the facility where you're having the interviews. So we're going to talk about now some good ways to make a good impression. First, you want to be able to communicate your goals, accomplishment, and training. This is very important. Uh, if you have not already thought about these things in regards to their company, you're not going to do well in this interview. And so you need to be able to, especially your accomplishments and your goals, you need to be able to communicate about those with the people that are interviewing you. Next, you want to talk about project enthusiasm. So the particular things that this company is highly involved with, you need to show enthusiasm about that. Be outgoing. The thing you want to remember is not to be dreading this. It's going to be a select few people that are going to get to come for a second level interview. And so you want to express that by being outgoing, being enthusiastic, having a smile on your face. This is not a bad thing to get called to a second level interview. This is a really good thing. You need to be able to show your maturity, especially at the social event. Uh, you're being able to mix business and pleasure are going to go a long way in showing that maturity. And finally, learning and using people's names. When you get introduced to individuals, you want to make sure to repeat their name back to them as quickly as you can and using it as often as you can as well. And finally, you want to make sure that you show your interest in the company and the position. Okay. Don't let any interviewer go away from interviewing you not knowing how interested you are in the position and the company. That's the worst thing that can happen to you. If you're not interested, then don't say anything. If it's turning out that this is not going to be the place for you, don't worry about it. But if you're even the slightest bit interested, you need to show that interest. You need to make sure they know it. So now let's talk about kind of afterwards the expenses and follow-up. So companies are going to be able to assist with arranging ground transportation. Typically this is talking about getting you from A to B to C to D. So from the airport to the hotel, the hotel to the location where the interviews are taking back place, back to the hotel and then back to the airport. Typically they're going to arrange for that ground transportation, even if it is a rental car. They will make that reservation for you. A lot of times I don't see companies doing this very much, providing cash up front for the travel, which basically means they're going to leave everything to you, booking the hotel reservation, booking the flight travel, etc. Most companies have a travel department or they use a travel agent and they can set all that up and have it direct billed to them. The air travel, the hotel room, uh, car service to pick you up, etc. Even the rental car if they want you to do that. So typically they would be prepaying for their airline tickets and they would be prepaying for the hotel room. So these would be typically your expenses from the trip. So anything that you take out of the mini bar, that's going to be on you. Any newspaper that you buy at the hotel, in the, plant, in the airport, on, on the way there, or on the way back, that's going to be on you. Any personal phone calls you make, like that local phone call to somebody that you might know there and you make from the hotel, that's on you. Any gifts that you might buy, any in-room movies that you might purchase, those are all going to be your expenses. Other expenses that would be covered by the company are going to be parking. So if you had to leave your car at the airport, they will really reimburse you for those fees. Uh, any cab fares, if they don't arrange a car service or if the hotel doesn't have a shuttle and you have to take a cab to and from anywhere, they would probably take care of those expenses. Now this says business phone calls, but I don't know what business phone calls you'd be making at this interview. 
So if they need to get in touch with you, more than likely they're going to have a cell phone and they would call that number. So I don't know how that would apply. Finally, uh, meals in, in route to and from the interview. So if you have to buy a meal at the airport in route to the location or even back, you keep that receipt and you'll get reimbursed for that. So follow up after the interview. You want to send a handwritten thank you note upon return from your interview, reaffirming your interest in the organization. And you're going to send one to each person that interviewed you and to each person that you met. So you want to make sure during this process you're collecting names, you're collecting business cards so that you can do this when you get back. If once you get through the interview, you're not that interested, you don't think it's going to be the place for you, even if they make an offer, don't bother sending a thank you note. You know, it's not going to be needed. But if you are interested in the position, this is a great way to reaffirm that interest and to get your name back in front of them again while they're making their considerations of who they're going to make offers to. So finally, just a quick word or two about evaluating offers that you may get. You know, money is going to be an important aspect of the offer, but there are other things to consider. You want to look at the job content. You want to look at the coworkers and the culture for the company and the location where you're going to be. You want to think about benefits that are going to be offered, such as vacation time, 401k, if there's flex time uh, offered as well. You want to look at the location where you might end up. You might start at one location during your training period, and then you may be transferred to a different location. And you want to make sure you have an idea of what those locations might be and which ones you'd be interested in going to. So you might have some homework to do on those when you get back. You want to look at the company size and think about, is this going to be a company where they, you can move forward, uh, whether that be on different types of projects or forward as far as becoming a management or an executive, and how feasible that is and what the time frame might be for something like that. If you're looking at a really large company, the time frame is going to be larger, longer than with a smaller company. You want to look at the types of professional development and training that they offer, such as advancing your degree, how would they advance your skills at the job, etc. What kind of alternate certifications do they offer? Uh, what kind of in-house training do they offer in, or, in order to help you move your career ahead, move it forward? You want to look at their management and leadership styles. And does it kind of jive with how you like to be managed? Do you prefer a micromanager or do you prefer someone that kind of maybe stays away a little bit? You want to look at the growth and the stability of the company. Are they moving forward? Are they digressing? Are they stagnant? These things are really important. Now, if a company is stagnant, they're not going anywhere, are you going to be able to come in and be a part of something that helps move them forward? And then finally, you want to look at the day-to-day -day responsibilities for the job. Is this going to be something that you're going to be in a cubicle all day long? Is it something that you're going to be in the field all day long? Is it a particular position where you're going to be in a cubicle or out in the field some? Or are you going to be traveling a lot? Is there going to be a lot of windshield time driving a car? These are the types of things you want to think about as well. And if you're evaluating more than one offer and all of these things are equal, then money will be your tiebreaker. So you want to make sure that you know money is not the end-all be-all of uh, the offers that you're considering. So this wraps up our presentation today for second-level interviewing.